Thank you so much for joining us for another daily devotion. We're so glad you're here. We're thankful for you, hoping that you are encouraged during this time. I got to tell you, I found something uh, recently that just took me straight back to my childhood. And, and as I was thinking about it, I was thinking about how much time I had spent with this, how much time I had spent just being inspired by it, just being encouraged by it. And, and I just remember just time and time again, just thinking about it and, and wanting so bad to spend more time with it. And it was this, it was this handheld Bo Jackson game. Now, Bo Jackson was the man when I was a kid. After all, Bo Jackson knew baseball, but then you flip this over, Bo Jackson knew football. Bo Jackson knew running, Bo Jackson knew training. He was the man, he could do it all. I remember that the the t-shirts that said Bo knows. I remember the poster where he's wearing his football pads and he's got that bat coming across his shoulders like this and just incredible physique, incredible ability, able to do it all. Tecmo Bo, I remember that. I remember just being dominant with Bo Jackson. And, and it was my dream to be like Bo Jackson. Do you remember? I remember even the cartoon, All Stars, and he had Bo Jackson and Michael Jordan and Wayne Gretzky. And I remember just thinking, oh, if I could be like that, if I could, if I could have that ability, if I could do all those things, that would just be absolutely incredible. And, and so it takes me to this place where I'm like, Oh, just what a joy that would be and how incredible it would be to be able to run like that, to perform on that kind of a basis and just have that kind of ability. And I'm reminded in this that, you know, the more I played with this, the less like Bo Jackson I was. It's interesting, the more I played with this, the, the fatter I got, you know. The, the more I played with this, the less I was able to run fast. I actually slowed down. I, I probably became less intelligent, even though I could hit 100 home runs and run up the score on the opposing teams on this game. I remember that really and honestly, I wasn't doing so good at all. You see Bo Jackson to become Bo Jackson, let's, let's be honest. He had some incredible God-given ability, but he also worked really, really, really hard. And it probably wasn't because he was playing a game. Can I be honest with you that there are many people, as we read from Scripture, that just go about playing the games? And so with that in mind, I want to take you to 1 Timothy chapter 4. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, starting with verse 7, it says, Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths, but rather train yourself for godliness. I love this. You know what, what it tells me is that we can spend a lot of our time involved in things that don't matter. For them, it was silly myths. For us, it could be all the things of, of the world that we let occupy our time. Maybe it's so much media, social media, news media, uh, bad news. Maybe it could be all the theories about what is going on. Maybe you have learned that all of your friends are experts in areas you never knew they knew anything about. It's, it's incredible how that happens. But here's what... Paul writes to Timothy, don't get caught up in silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. You know, the, like I said, the more I played this, the less I look like Bo Jackson. And you know, the more we concern ourselves and occupy all of our time and our thoughts and our efforts and things of the world, the less we look like Jesus Christ. This is why Paul writes to Timothy and he tells him, rather train yourself. Now notice this, that training is hard work. It takes time and we have to prove and we have to continue to put forth the effort that proves our commitment to Christ. Now we know this, that we're not saved by works, that this is a gift from God, but at the same time, we know that faith without works is dead. And so we work hard, we train ourselves in godliness. I love what it goes on to say, it says this, it says, Rather, train yourself for godliness, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds the promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Do you know that in the gospel of Jesus, as we train ourselves to walk in the ways of Jesus, as we train ourselves to walk in godliness, that literally we have promises for the present world that he will never leave us or forsake us, 
that he sticks closer than a brother, that he, he loves us, that he loved us so much, he sent his son into the world so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And not only does it have promises for now, but it has promises for the life to come. Meaning this, that the promises of God go far beyond this life. That we have a hope and a future for all eternity with Jesus. And so as we train ourselves with godliness, we begin to look more like Jesus. But if we train ourselves and spend our time playing little games, we look less and less like Jesus and more and more like the world. It's interesting, Paul tells Timothy and in 2 Timothy, he goes on to tell them and he talks to them and he uses three key examples. One is that he uses the example of an athlete. The next one is that he uses an example of, of, of the civilian or the soldier not getting caught up in the civilian affairs. And the next one is actually he uses the working of a farmer. I want you to listen to these three examples. It says this. It says, share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits. Know this, serve the king. And when I say the king, I mean the king of kings. Serve him. Get caught up in his work. See how you can make a difference by loving him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and loving your neighbor as yourself. Listen to what it says this. It says, share in the suffering as a good soldier of Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. their standards. <clears throat> when we walk according to God's prescriptions for our life, when we walk according to his precepts, when we walk according to his uh, roles and responsibilities, according to his rules and, and guidelines for our life, we see this, that we walk in a manner worthy of the gospel. It goes on to say this, <clears throat> it is the hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. I want you just to be encouraged this, that remember Jesus Christ. Listen to this, first, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, has preached in my gospel for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I want you to know that I grew up idolizing Bo Jackson. But I got caught up in playing games and not in training. I don't want that to happen in my walk with Christ. I pray today that we would train ourselves in godliness, that we would set down all the games, that we would set down all the worldly affairs, and that we would look to the author and the perfecter of our faith, that we would shake off everything that so easily entangles us, and that we would run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And I pray that our eyes never lose focus of the author and the perfecter of our faith. Be encouraged today.